Imagine, if you will, a scenario where you just purchased a big screen TV. You've set it up in your home theater, you put in your favorite Blu-ray, the image is beautiful, stunning, almost lifelike. But what's that? What is that tiny noise that sounds like it's coming from very far away? Is that the dialogue of the movie? Was that an explosion? This is nothing like the theater experience. Well, we're here to fix that. Now, as most of you with an LCD TV or even monitor already know, thinner and thinner and thinner panels, well, manufacturers had to make sacrifices in order to make that happen. They had to shrink down as much of the bezel and thickness as possible, which means that large speaker diaphragms are one of the first things to go. If you're somewhat familiar with physics, then you'll know that while a larger speaker doesn't necessarily guarantee that it's gonna be better quality, uh, it does mean that it can displace more air and at least be louder without working that hard, so it at least has a chance of sounding better, whereas a tiny little speaker is not gonna sound good no matter what you do, unless you, like, put it inside your ear and it's designed for that. So, if you're looking for more of, like, a couch distance experience from your TV, well, then you're pretty much stuck with replacing the speakers that come inside your TV, and in this video, we'll be going over the most common types of upgrades that you'll see. Let's start with the smallest and least obtrusive solution, a sound bar. Like the name implies, it is a bar that usually goes underneath your TV and therefore doesn't kill the overall aesthetic of your slim television. Instead of using a lot of physical speakers like you would in a traditional surround sound system, sound bars use lots of smaller drivers all in one place aimed in different directions that are designed to bounce sound around in order to create a virtual surround experience. That is to say the sound bars that are surround sound bars do. The ones that are just stereo sound bars are just for aesthetics and they'll contain just two speakers and sometimes even like a pseudo subwoofer. For the best results you'll want one with a subwoofer since those tiny little speakers don't produce much bass and you know if you're all about that bass and no treble then that might be a problem for you. Now the Sinclair Audio Sculpture TV3 soundbar that we've got here includes a wireless separate subwoofer which is another solution. It makes cable management easy Easier since you can hide the subwoofer anywhere in the room that has power and the sound bar can actually even mount on the back of the TV for the cleanest look possible. Now sound bars are great for small apartments or relatively square rooms because you need to be able to bounce the sound around to get that surround sound effect otherwise it will sound pretty flat and boring although potentially still better than the onboard speakers. If you have a larger or oddly shaped room or you just have a lot of junk in the way like chairs and plants and, you know, guests, then you should maybe look at bookshelf or tower style speakers. We've got the Sinclair Audio WB T30s here, which feature three inch woofers, but you can also find bookshelf speakers with drivers as large as eight inches. Bookshelf speakers with six inch or larger woofers will usually have enough bass for music, but you'll still want a subwoofer if you want to feel the explosions. It's slightly more annoying to wire up since you need both speakers connected to each other in this case, or in the case of other bookshelves, you might need them all wired into your receiver, but this gives you a ton of flexibility for setting up the perfect placement around your listening position. Now, these ones have onboard power. They're active speakers, so they have a built-in amplifier that drives both of the speakers. You can just directly plug your source in, but like I said, that's not always the case, and you may end up needing a receiver in order to power all of your speakers. Finally, you've got the true 5.1 surround setup, and there's two variations that you can go to for this. You can go with a home theater in a box, or you can build your own audio system up DIY style from scratch by pairing a center channel with some front speakers and then throwing in a couple of surround speakers as well. And then finally topping it all off with a subwoofer. This is where the term 5.1 comes from. 
five satellites, and one subwoofer. You'll need a receiver that in most cases acts as an amplifier for everything but the subwoofer as well in order to power everything, so this option takes up the most space but can deliver the most BA experience. A cool thing about this option though is that if you have a dedicated receiver there's a lot of different ways that you can listen depending on what kind of content you want. So you know you're listening to music you can switch it to just stereo since that's how most music is recorded. If you're watching movies you can switch to you know whatever type of encoding of surround is in that particular movie and you can really get the most out of whatever type of content it is. It's just that that major downside of the higher cost and amount of room needed. Now there's a lot more to learn about speakers, but hopefully this quick overview, so sound bars, stereo bookshelves, and then surround sound systems is enough to steer you at least in the somewhat right direction. And once you've narrowed it down to the category of speaker you want, then you can start looking into which brands and specific models are a perfect fit for you. So let us know in the comments below whether you have upgraded the speakers in your TV, and if you did, what strategy did you go with? Thanks for watching, guys. Be sure to like and subscribe for more videos like this from NCIX. If you're looking for something else to watch, we've got a few choice selections for you right here. And if you want to follow us on social media, then you can find that over on the other side. And I'll see you on the other side.